Things could be better, but having said that, a lot of these people suffered appallingly under the tigers, and they have shelter, they have food, uh, they have much better food than they had for a long time, and one of the things that we are actually quite determined to do is to give them a better life when they go back. The allegations of human rights abuses against your government make grim reading. Thousands of Tamils killed by the army during the rebels' last stand. Scores of people disappeared. Tens of thousands or more than a, a quarter of a million people still interned in camps. How do you answer these charges, guilty or not guilty? We've actually said very clearly, give us an allegation and we will look into it. For instance, uh, Philip Alston, I think, said, you know, there have been allegations of war crimes. We said, tell us one. Let me show you some pictures from the camp taken by a British photographer. I mean, this is the pre-primary school children. And someone said to me, they've got uniforms. And I said, yes, we treat all our children equally. We give them good conditions. These are a couple of the boys. These are two little girls. Wouldn't it be easier if you allowed me in as a journalist to see this for myself? We did allow journalists in. We still do. But can I but tell you? you can I you tell you? Can if I, I applied for a visa, I wouldn't get one. No, some people do. But can I tell you what happened about journalists? I was one of those in my ministry which advocated letting journalists in. Mm. And in March, we started letting a lot of people in. A lot of people gave us excellent coverage. The Indian journalists, I think, contributed very heavily to the diminution of hysteria in Tamil Nadu. I know the BBC said that they were all going to vote against the Congress government. They didn't. Unfortunately, like bad money, bad journalism drove out the good. One of the reasons just... you kept people in these camps, you say, is to flush out rebel fighters. How are you flushing them out? Flush what out. does it take to flush it's somebody out? It's not a out. question of flushing out. It's a way of finding out whether we have possible terrorist threats by inquiry and by information that's coming Human through. Human rights abuses? Not in the slightest. For instance, what, the, what we now have is rehabilitation centres where, when I was there myself, and let me just show you pictures, these are the girls in the rehabilitation camp. Uh, we, all did, we had about 9,500 at the time I visited. These are people who had confessed on the way in, and the government position is generally these are probably people who are forced to fight. Does Sri Lanka's increasing isolation from Europe and from the West concern you? I don't think it's increasing isolation at all. We did have the rather sad situation where when we were fighting terror, some European countries tried to stand out against us. And I think we were deeply disappointed. I think we were very disappointed when, although countries like Norway and even the European Union had called on the Tigers to surrender, Britain refused to do that. What's your message to the international community? My message point? to the international community is, if you discuss with us how we can make things better for our Tamil citizens, we will be with you all the way. The Indian government has done this consistently. They were totally against terrorism, but they also made it very clear to us that they had every concern for the welfare of our fellow citizens. My message to the West in particular is stop this love affair with the Tigers. Don't give in to those people in the diaspora who keep saying that the Tigers are the Tamils. The Tamils are decent, hard-working people who for a variety of reasons were under the control of terrorists through the fault of a number of people. 